Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We did it. We knocked out 2024 Topps Chrome Baseball. Eight box jumbo. Pick your team three from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Pick your team. The next pick your team is uh, pretty close to filling. We could, we could squeeze in another one of these tonight if you want to. Here on Thursday the 18th, pick your team three. Thanks everyone for grabbing your teams. Congrats to the people who won their way in through that filler. Blaster box one. And David Harrell with the Giants. Last five mojo. All right, so let's uh, pop this jumbo case open. Empty box. Let's stack these boxes on top of each other here. So you can see four and a four. We're looking at three chrome autographs per box on average, I guess. It's also MVP buyback program. Don't forget about that. Now, last year, I feel like it was a it was pretty clear cut uh, who who the MVPs were going to be. This year, not as clear cut, so it's probably a good idea just to grab some teams with a potential um, with a potential MVP favorite. And we've been keeping track of the odds on uh, sportsbettingtime.com. They keep track of the odds throughout the year. So for the AL, currently, Aaron Judge is the overwhelming favorite for uh, NL or AL MVP at minus 310. That's uh, DraftKings has the best odds at minus 310. FanDuel and MGM have them at longer odds. Juan Soto, his teammate, plus 1,800, 18 to 1. Gunners plus 310. So it's possible that the, that the Orioles could produce a uh, an MVP. If you're thinking a little bit of a longer shot, what about Bobby Wood Jr.? 20 to one, go by the Royals in these group breaks. You know, there's some potential MVPs sitting there. But those are your favorites. Aaron Judge, Gunnar Henderson, Juan Soto, Bobby Wood Jr. And then it jumps to 100 to 1, Tristan Casas. So very long, very big long shots there. All right, we've got a nice Ellie De La Cruz rookie card up top. We got all edge Julio Rodriguez, Byron Buxton, hyper parallel. Those are not numbered. We've got a Jackson uh, Merrill. We'll see some of these guys up there. That's going to go to the Padres, Adam Kelly. Ellie Dela Cruz going to Adam Kelly as well. Nice. Good, good group of teams there. Summer in the Park. I like that insert. Summer in the Park. Like that old late 80s design right there. Nice Junior Caminero. And here's our first auto of three. Kyle Harrison. And we'll do an auto recap at the end of this as well. Purple Speckle Autograph 261 out of 299 for my rivals, the Giants. David Harrell. Has the Giants. Last spot mojo. 70% of the time, last spot mojo hits all the time. 
Junior Cameron Air will go to EA and the Rays. Hopefully we'll see him in action this year. In the majors, that is. He was raking in the minors and then got a quad injury that kept him out. And then he was coming back from that and was was around for another couple of weeks, maybe threatening to get the call up, but then got another quad injury or a hamstring injury or something like that. There's Tyler, Tyler Fitzgerald, another giant for David. And I don't, I don't think it's super serious, but I don't, I don't think the Rays, considering the position they're in in the standing, I don't think they're in a rush to, uh, they're in a rush to uh, rush him up. And there's an N.D. Rodriguez rookie autograph for the Pirates. That'll be for Michael Langer. We'll see Jason Mingus back pretty soon as well. That'll go to Matt Smith and the Yankees. And we've got we got Weston Wilson. That's our fourth autograph. Bonus auto. Orange wave autograph uh, going to the Phillies. Nick Stanley with the fighting Phils. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. We're saving Wyatt Langford's as well. Gunner, I guess we can save. This is MVP buyback stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, any one of I mean, those top guys. I think it's going to be Aaron Judge, but we'll save one of these Gunner Hendersons just in case. That's what makes this Topps Chrome. I'm glad they started doing that, ladies and gentlemen, because that's what makes this Topps Chrome fun because, you know, any team could be, quote-unquote, a big team. Tristan Gray to 350. Logan O'Hoppy back there. All right, box one done. Bonus auto, fourth auto. I don't mind that. I was like, Dodgers are going to have a tough time in the Tokyo series because they have to choose between Glasnow, Otani, Sasaki, yeah. or, Sasaki, yeah. or uh, Yamamoto. <laughs> Man, that's going to be tough. <laughs> well, for sure, Otani will do that. So, that'll be three at least. Uh, yeah. I mean, imagine if like three fifths of our rotation were Japanese guys. That'd be kind of that'd be well, historic. Yeah, like, uh, I think. Otani should be pitching by that. I mean, Absolutely. So, so you're probably like, game it's one. A two game, right? It's just two games, right? It's got, yeah. So I'm saying like, they either have to have him. I think it's two games. You would, you would have to pitch one, right? I mean, oh yeah. It, and then it's the, like, the, 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 the Japanese fans would riot no, if, if like Otani didn't He's pitch. Definitely playing, but for sure pitching. Probably. Yeah. But it's like if you have Sasaki, then I don't think. Yeah, I would, I would be like, go Otani Yamamoto, and then glass and a home opener. Yeah. Set it up like that. Let's check the NL odds currently going into... Uh, yeah, Otani's not as big a favorite as, as Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge was minus 310, but Otani's pretty close, minus 290. So any Otanis are obviously MVP buyback program. I almost forgot about that. I'm and glad. him and Harper just goes crazy. So yeah, and, that, and Harper is 6-1, to one, which is the next closest. But then it jumps yeah. to 25-1. to one. Plus 2,500, Freddie Freeman, Marcelo Zuna, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Oh. So that's about it. And it's going to be Aaron, Aaron Judge, Shohei Otani. But could be some surprises. Oh, everyone's here. No, oh, Jason left. Jordan Lawler, rookie rush. Am I not going to what? Okay. 
Um, I'm gonna have to postpone golf tomorrow. I can't go either. Oh, okay, then that works out. I don't feel bad. Casey Schmidt, five out of 50. I mean, gold why? wave. Why can't you go, Joe? Because I've got all sorts of things to do. Like what? I, I have to, I have to like do a bunch of laundry. I have to unpack a bunch of stuff, oh, repack a bunch of stuff. I've got so much things to do. You can, you can, I, I you can tell me this. You can tell me the truth off stream. You want me to tell you the truth? I had a range session today and it was terrible, and I'm f not feeling confident about golfing tomorrow. I do have a lot of errands to do though, but that's one of this that that put it over the edge. I gotta, I gotta work on the game. On the range. Got to grind. Not ready for outdoors yet. Nolan Chanuel. Rookie autograph for the Halos. That'll be for Zach Sullivan. Wyatt Langford. Future stars Corbin Carroll. There's a Jung-Hoo Lee. Kind of feel bad for him. That will obviously feel bad for him. Did his shoulder kind of earlier in this in the year and was out for the year. I feel like he was just getting warmed up to the to the major leagues. Here's Rafael Devers to 150. It's for David Harrell. But the silver lining for Giants fans anyway is that um, is that that uh, caused the call up of Helio Ramos who was once a top prospect for the Giants, if you remember, a couple of years ago. That was the main chase for the Giants. But, but it faltered. Didn't really look good in his limited time in the majors. But got the call up again this year and has been raking. And here's a Junior Caminero. Nice, and that's a refractor for uh, for EA and the Rays. It's a base Caminero. And a TJ Hopkins, another red team that's going to go to the Reds, Adam Kelly. Did I pass up a judge? Yeah, possibly. It's probable and possible. Here's a, I did. There it is. Good eye. I was just making sure you were paying attention, Brent. <laughs> All right, part of the MVP buyback. I forget what the, what the prices are at your local hobby shop. You can probably Google the details or something like that, but like base is worth one thing and then refractors are worth another thing. Lum numbered cards are worth another. I think it's like a credit to, like, it's store credit, basically, just for bringing those in. And I think, I'm not sure what Tops is doing with them. I think the following year, they may put some of those buybacks back into the next year's product as like super, super short prints. I don't know, maybe they have some, maybe, maybe some will go into archive signature series. You know, so who knows? And here's a Osvaldo Beto, 61 out of 150 blue Ray Wave autograph for the A's, Nate. with the Rays. Here's Shota, Imanaga. And sort of a long shot right now for MVP, but we'll sleeve up one of those. Send that off to Coppola just in case. All right, next. So those are your MVP odds for now. What about Cy Young? Is Cy Young, I think Cy Young's still pretty much the same as when we last checked. Tariq Skubal is, 
is your favorite in the AL to win Cy Young. The Tigers lefty, it's minus 130. Next is Corbin Burns at plus 325. And then it jumps to Logan Gilbert at plus 1,200. So Tariq Scoob and Corbin Burns are your guys. Oh, yeah, you can scan that QR code right there. I don't know if it'll work through your stream, but get more information on the MVP buyback program. Are some rumors rumbling about Tariq Skubal being uh, being traded, which is a little surprising. But then I realized Skubal's rookie year was a couple years ago. So I don't, I don't know where he is on the arbitration. Oh, so he's got. He's got two more arbitration years left before he hits free agency. So that could it could be a big haul for the Tigers if they don't think they could hold on to hold on to him. They should though. It's more likely Zach Remyard's teammate Garrett Crochet gets traded, right? Nice Mason win for the Cardinals. That'll be for D.Y. Nice Aaron Judge, 58 out of 199. Aqua Lava. All right, so this could be big dollars in the uh, MVP buyback market. Nice Junior Caminero, Hyper Parallel for EA and the Rays. And Colton Kowser, Orioles Auto for Aaron. Orioles have a little, top loader has a little chip in it right there, you can kind of see. Not, not worthy of Colton Kowser. This one's a lot cleaner here. Orioles have a lot of uh, young hitters on that team. They could use a little starting pitching. I mean, that could be that could be something something that happens by the trade deadline, which is what a couple weeks end of end of this month, end of July. They gotta start figuring it out. This guy's not gonna get traded, but. Some of the, young, the other youngsters, it's possible. Uh, no, not Gunnar. Gunnar Henderson won't get traded. Rushman's not going to get traded. Arzarena could get traded. 170 out of 299. He's having a down year, but but maybe a change of scenery would be good for him. This goes to EA. And there's a Heston Kirkstad refractor for the Orioles. I wouldn't mind the I wouldn't mind my Dodgers getting a little outfield help. With uh, with someone like Randy Arzarena, who's also shown that he could be pretty clutch in the postseason, which is something the Dodgers definitely need. Jackson Churio, nice, one sixty five out of four ninety nine, rookie auto for the Brewers. E A, it's in the game. One of the big prospects, not just for the Brewers, but in baseball. Nice. And Evan Carter for uh, Adam Kelly and the Rangers. Does Vlad Jr. get traded? This guy could get traded too. Um. Guys like uh, teams like the Mariners could use could use a guy like Vlad Guerrero Jr. Nice 
Ellie De La Cruz. And Michael Garcia, 51 out of 99. I don't think those inserts for Aaron Judge are part of the buyback pro program. But nice Ellie De La Cruz, late 80s version. Michael Garcia, Green Wave going to the Royals. That'll be for Coppola. People speculating Bo Bichette could get traded as well. And there's our third auto, Mason McCoy, Padres autograph, going to Adam Kelly and the Friars. All right, fourth box. Uh, let's take a glance at the NL Cy Young. So Tariq Skubal, Corbin Burns are your favorites there. Tariq Skubal is, is, is at minus odds, and Corbin Burns still at plus odds. Uh, in the Cy, uh, so NL Cy Young race is a little bit closer. Chris Sale, plus 140. Zach Wheeler's right behind him at plus 165. Then it jumps to Paul Skeens at plus 500, believe it or not. Then... That that's in those three are separate from everybody else. Then it starts with Tyler Glass now at thirty to one, and it continues on from there. Paul Skeens is five to one. Could Paul Skeens win Rookie of the Year and the NL Cy Young? Has that ever happened? I feel like there's been. Rookies of the Year and MVPs, I feel like that's happened a few times. But a Rookie of the Year and a Cy Young? Oh, it has happened. Fernando in 81. It doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> Let's put it that way. We got the Joey Votto relic with the hologram sticker right there. So if you look at those tiny little letters and numbers, if you look that up, you can see exactly where that jersey came from. I think MLB.com slash authentication. This Joey Votto relic will go to Adam Kelly and the Reds. I think Joey Votto's in the... Blue Jays organization right now. <laughs> Here's a Glaber Torres, 64 out of 199, Aqua Lava for Matt Smith and the Yankees. Mookie Betts is starting to field grounders after he uh, <coughs> broke his uh, hand. I think he's on track. There's Christian Encarnacion Strand. Is he still on the IL? Adam Kelly with the Reds. I feel like he's another one of these up-and-coming Reds players here. I think he was playing all right until... So he went on the IL. He might still be on the IL. <laughs> Junior Camonero. Aaron Judge. Forrest Wall to 250. Stephen Kwan hitting 350.
Forrest Wall, purple, will go to Jonathan and the Braves. Base Aaron Judge will go to Matt Smith and the Yankees. The Caminero will go to EA and the Rays. Evan Carter will go to Adam Kelly as well. We have one autograph. Should be looking for two more. And Forrest Wall. Rookie auto for the Braves, Jonathan. Jonathan B with the ATL. Got Sunny Gray, 38 out of 99, Green Wave for the Cardinals. DY with the Redbirds. And Brian Wu, 291 out of 299. Purple Speckle Autograph for Seattle. Steve Kelly with the Mariners. There's Kyle Bridge. All right, we got the three autographs and the relic. Halfway through this jumbo box break. Four more boxes to go. About another 30 minutes to go. Now we have the Breakers Delight version of Topps Chrome Baseball on the site right now. That would be a fun break to do tonight. I think that's at... That filler is at 29 spots left. $23.99. Now we would have time to do another jumbo case break. Uh, so this is, we're on pick your team three. Pick your team four is only five teams away. Now that's gonna go into a filler after this break, but I think it's probably easier to move five teams instead of a 30 spot filler. All right, there's a Jason Dominguez. That's for Matt Smith and the Yankees. Jason Dominguez again in that late 80s design. There's a Wyatt Langford. Jackson Holiday. Summertime in the park insert. Summer, summer, summertime. Adam Kelly has the Rangers. Chung Hu Lee. David with the Giants. There's an Otani, and there's a Coca Montes. No, I never got around to that. Well, so they just dropped their last season. Last season ever? 
Yeah, it's like their fifth and final, supposedly. Okay. Part one, and then they're gonna Maybe I could go. Maybe I could yeah. binge it now. Yeah, it's on all the Netflix. That's really Adam good. Kelly with the Raw. I just recently finished. Uh, I started and watched Squid Games. Oh really? Yeah, never. I actually didn't see it. Vanessa's seen all that. She never got around to it. It's pretty good. It is. <laughs> I was like, "What's all the fuss?" And it ended up being really awesome, really terrifying, but really awesome. And I guess the second season is coming up at the end of the year. That'd be a good excuse to watch that. There's uh, Ellie Dela Cruz to 150. Nice. That is for Adam Kelly and the Red Legs. There's a Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who's starting to throw after a shoulder issue. Starting to start a throwing program here. Here's a base Otani for the Dodgers. Shane, who won the Dodgers in the filler. That's part of the MVP buyback. And a nice Heston Kirkstad, rookie autograph for the Orioles. Aaron. Nice. Not a lot of games for this kid yet, but a former uh, top five pick, maybe? If I remember correctly. So I think the expectations are pretty high on him. All right, that, those are, uh, no, we got two autos. Looking for one more. We got a Kyle Schorber, Magenta, to 350, 77 out of 350. Nick Stanley with the Phillies. Junior Camonero for the Rays. That'll be for EA. Eloy Jimenez. Uh, Jackson Churio. There's Shota Imanaga. And nice Reese Olsen, Aqua Shimmer autograph, 170 out of 199. Tigers, Tiger uppercut. Tiger, that'll be for Jeff Sanders. There you go, Jeff. Oh, and an Ellie Dela Cruz refractor. We'll take that as well. Adam Kelly and the Reds. I'll do an autograph recap when I finish this break right here. Three more boxes to go. Uh, let's take a, we saw the MVP, Cy Young's. Let's take a quick look at the AL and NL Rookie of the Year odds. I think NL is going to be pretty obvious. Um, Paul Skeens is the overwhelming favorite at minus 1,000. Next closest is Jackson Merrill at plus 550. Then it jumps to Shota at 28 to 1. Paul Skeens, minus 1,000. Now, if that doesn't resonate with you, it's in, in, if you don't bet too often, it's a money line bet. That means you have to give the book, right, like DraftKings, FanDuel, or MG, you have to give them $1,000. And if Paul Skeens wins Rookie of the Year, you'll get $100 back. So that's how overwhelming that favorite is. As opposed to say Jackson Merrill is at plus five fifty, if you pay the book a hundred bucks, and Jackson Merrill wins NL Rookie of the Year, you'll get five hundred and fifty dollars back. 
But that, of course, is a longer shot. Now, even if you don't actually place any wagers, you know, I like using the, the, that betting market just for conversational purposes and kind of get an idea of what, what, the, what the market thinks of these players. The AL Rookie of the Year race is a little bit closer. It's between Wyatt Langford at plus 135, Luis Heal at plus 225, then it jumps to Sedan Rafael at 11-1. So the AL race is a, is a wee bit closer. And here's a Shohei Otani Ultraviolet All-Stars. Is this a short print? No, no, it's 27 out of 50. I don't know how common this insert is, though. Pretty cool. That's going to go to Shane and the Dodgers. That's a cool looking card though, I like it. There's an Ellie Della Cruz. It's the uh, Strokes insert. That might be a short print, I haven't seen too many of those. There's a Shohei Otani base. Spencer Steer Gold, 41 out of 50. Adam Kelly and the Reds. Otani's going to Shane and the Dodgers. And a base, Ellie Dela Cruz, another one for Adam. And there's a Brian Wu. That'll be for Steve Kelly and the M's. There's a Jackson Merrill. Nathaniel Lowe, 24 out of 99. Yeah, Jackson Merrill is an all-star. He's been playing really well. And you know, he's a hitter. Unless you're Paul Skeens. I feel like in doing Paul Skeensy things, I feel like the hitters always get a little extra attention and these kind of things. It's Jackson Holiday, rookie hyper. For Aaron and the O's. The Evan Carter insert, the late 80s insert, I guess 1989, I think, right? Going to uh, Adam Kelly and. The Rangers. There's a Jason Dominguez for Matt Smith. Ali Dela Cruz, summertime in the park. Insert for Adam Kelly and the Slade Kakoni. 241 out of 299. Purple speckle autograph for David Baker and the Diamondbacks. The Snakes. He's a cold hearted snake. Look into his eyes. Need more penny sleeves. Wyatt Lankford, and Chung Hu Lee. Judge and Otani inserts. Yamamoto, and we got a Kyle uh, Leahy autograph. That will be for D Y N the Cardinals, the Redbirds. 
And that was uh, Jordan Westberg. <laughs> Another jumbo box. Rex is saying, okay, I know Skeen 6 0 has a lot better ERA. Because that one meltdown in Imanaga game, but Imanaga has more wins, 8 and 2. Has 8 more Ks, and their whip isn't that far apart, but Skeen is there. Um, what else am I missing for judging Rookie of the Year? It factor. I mean, so it's, that's saying a lot for Skeens. Think about how he's, Skeens has pitched fewer innings than Imanaga, right? So he's already caught up with Imanaga in strikeouts? There's only eight strikeouts behind Imanaga, so that's quite a feat. Because, like, he has less, I want to say he certainly has less innings than, let's see if I could find some stats really quick. Right, so think about how, uh, you know, think about how many uh, strikeouts Skeens must have posted. Can I look up stats and just, just pitching and just rookies? Oh, I can't. Could just be National League? Yes, I can do that. I mean, Skeens has, has 12 strikeouts per nine. Uh, that's, and Imanaga has nine strikeouts per nine. That's a huge difference. That's, that's fifth in the NL for Paul Skeens, and that's 25th in the NL for Imanaga. I mean, Imanaga is definitely having a great season, but... But Skeens has really just been doing extraordinary things. I Oh, here's the other thing, Rex. A lot of times... Um, you know, fair or not, a lot of times the uh, Japanese players who are older and come into the league don't get as much uh, credit because there will be a lot of voters who are like, well, Shoji Imanaga is not really a rookie. There's Ozzy Albies to 250. Ozzy Albies for Jonathan the Brave. So I think I think some writers, some voters will ding players for that because they'll be like, well, this is Paul Skeens' first 
professional year in baseball. This is not Imanaga's per- first professional year. It's his first year in, the, in Major League Baseball, which I know is definitely different, but... But I think that, that probably has a lot to do with it as well. There's Sawyer Gibson Long. That'll be for Detroit. That's going to be for Jeff. Now, if there's no other viable candidates, then yeah, you know, that player, you know, that, you know, Japanese player will, will get, you know, the, the Rookie of the Year awards. There's Jackson Churia as well, but... You know, writers, writers will, the voters will dock points for that. Which makes sense. There's Jorge Soler, 009 out of 350. So even with most things seemingly equal, there's a refractor Evan Carter for Texas. That'll be Fred and Kelly. So even with most things being equal, I think people will 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 wait Paul Skeens a little bit more because they'll be like, well, all right, sure. You know, they're putting up numbers. They're putting up someone arms. But this is Paul Skeens' first year, you know, in professional baseball. I think that's where that's where he gets the the extra love there. There's Andrew Abbott. And that's the Reds, Adam Kelly. And remember, for Vegas odds, Rex, it's not necessarily based on, it starts on what Vegas initially thinks. But then those lines will move because of, um, so it's not completely accurate, but because of the money. Then they adjust the odds based on how much money is flowing in, flowing in. And they'll always adjust lines then. Here's Coco Montes, blue wave, 275. So a lot of money in the last couple weeks has been flooding into these sports books, enough for them to start moving the lines. You know, maybe, maybe Skeens was even money, plus 100. People kept betting it. So they, don't, they, they want to make it more and more difficult so, to even, so not to have too much liability, right? You don't have to pay out too much. They moved it to... Minus 200, people are still betting. Minus 500, people are still betting. It's at, some books have even stopped taking bets on Paul Skeens this week. Of the year. And there's a Matt Olson, 9 out of 10 in that 1989 design. That looks really cool. That will be for Jonathan and the Braves. Yeah, so it's not it's not a sub Oliver. So it's not Vegas arbitrarily moving the lines based on what they think or based on stats. They're using stats. In addition to, they have the additional added bit of information with the money that's flowing in and out or in. So then they can adjust accordingly. And since there's like Dozens of sports books and digital sports books and, you know, all these numbers that they have based on people's betting habits all around the country, right? So it's not like, it's not like, oh, these guys are just Cubs haters and that's, you know, that's why, no, this is national money, you know, flowing in and, you know, in the betting world, people don't like to lose money, right? So they're not, they're not just throwing away money on, so like, that's why that, I like looking at these betting lines because it's a strong indication, not a perfect one, but a very, very strong indication on where what people are thinking. But it could be a, it could be an interesting race, you know, if I don't know. Paul Skeens had his last start before the All-Star break. That's good timing too, right? 
Seven no-hit innings, 11 strikeouts, which is ridiculous. You know, now if Imanaga can knock out a no-hitter and then go toe-for-toe -toe with Paul Skeen, who knows? That, that could make the race a little more interesting. But I think Skeens would have to fall off, would have to tail off pretty considerably. Because again, the other thing that makes the difference is that a lot of people are like, well, Skeens is a true rookie. Here's Nelly Dela Cruz. What do you think, Oliver? Is uh, Paul Skeens rookie of the year? He's minus a thousand. Like I think on DraftKings. Here's Nevin Carter Hyper. And that's just DraftKings. Most books have them higher than that. FanDuel's minus 1,100. MGM minus 1,200. And the Wyatt Langford autograph. Nice. He's your currently... In a tighter race in the NL, but currently the odds on leader for AL Rookie of the Year. There you go, Adam Kelly with the Texas Rangers. Not numbered, but still, still an auto, still nice. Mason Wynn. And we got an Andrew Sal Frank. 7 out of 50. Gold wave for David and the Diamondbacks. It's a cold hearted snake. Look into his eyes. Uh oh. He's in town. Wyatt Langford. Ellie. Gavin Williams, rookie autograph. Cleveland, this is for you. John W. with the Guardians. Mason Wynn Hyper, nice. That will be for the Cardinals. That's going to go to D.Y. Mason Wynn also having a nice season. He's plus 5,500 for you know, Rookie of the Year favorites. So it's Skeen's heavy favorite, then Jackson Merrill plus 550, Shota plus 2,800, then it jumps to Gavin Stone, and Michael Bush kind of in the four middle plus 4,000s range. Joey Ortiz is plus 5,000, Mason Wynn plus 5,500, then it, there's another tier jump. James Wood is plus 9,000. Isaiah Campbell to 299, purple speckle. Here's a Notani, part of the buyback program. Uh, 
he stay mentally healthy. Right? That has a lot to do with this game, which is being able to. So Ryan's and Connor Phillips is our final autograph, 142 out of 150. Mark, what's going on, man? Wants to throw in his two cents. Yeah, I mean, that's the only reason why, yeah, you would maybe, obviously, I don't think anyone's going to be, at this point, there's no value in putting any money on Paul Skeen's win NL Rookie of the Year. But, you know, if you're, if you're thinking, hey, what if Skeens, you know, goes down for, goes on an IL stint, right? Then, yeah, then maybe you're thinking I could sprinkle a little bit on Jackson Merrill or maybe even a longer shot like Shota or Gavin Stone or something like that. And maybe, or Mason Wynn, James Woods at plus 9,000. You know, if those guys ahead of him, you know, maybe, uh, here's the recap, maybe cool off or... You know, not not that we're hoping for injury, but you know, maybe get a little knock. You know that that you know those long shots might might be good that you sprinkle a little something on them. Really nice break, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of nice stuff here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with me. I'm Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next Topps Chrome break. Bye bye.